Hello everybody, Stuart from Riku here. Today I just wanted to make a quick video because we've been lucky enough to get accepted to the beta of DALI 2 from OpenAI. We've been playing a lot of different image generation tools and we do hope to have some of these integrated into Riku at some point in the future. At the moment, some of the terms on some of the tools do prohibit that, so we can't have DALI 2 within uh, Riku anytime soon but we will keep an eye out for when those terms sort of change and see how they will look. What I wanted to do today with looking at DALI 2 was one, to look at it from a sort of art generation perspective and two, look at it from a perspective of looking at logos and for designers and UX designers and seeing how it could help them within their work. So let's have a look at some of the things that I've generated with DALI 2. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a few generations live and hopefully show you some awesome stuff. So let's get into it. So with uh, DALI 2, you get a user interface like this where you can enter your description and it will give you some generations. So you'll see here that I've put menacing looking raccoon holding a pitchfork and a torch ready to protest. And we've got some fun illustrations like this. And what you'll notice with uh, everything that DALI2 creates, you get this little uh, password sequence on the bottom right. They sign all of the photos with the sequence. So you'll see this like rainbow colors and you'll know that anything with that in the bottom right is generated with DALI2. You can go into each of these, you can download them if you want, or you can save them and add them to your collection. So this was very fun. This was just a basic sort of prompt that we were playing around with. And then I saw if you put digital art, then you're gonna get even more sort of uh, interesting outputs. So we put digital art on the end, and you'll see that we've got some really cool stuff. You get the pictures looking a bit more detailed, a little less uh, sort of cartoony um a more like art artsy work so these are very cool i like the uh you know the expression within the eyes you've got the torch you have it's it's difficult to get the uh torch and the pitchfork together you'll notice this one has sort of that within it so <clears throat> that's very cool to play around with and one of the other things that i thought i'd try is silicon valley bro founder twiddling their thumbs digital art and you have these interesting interpretations of what a Silicon Valley bro founder looks like. And I really like this one because he's got his hand doing some interesting stuff and he's also got like a startup-y t-shirt with some text on it. And what you'll find with a lot of these image generation tools is they don't really perform well with uh, text. And if you ask it to put some text you are going to get uh, mostly gibberish back. It might get it right once out of a blue moon, but it's not very uh, not very predictable. Um, then what I've done is I did some sort of more photorealistic stuff and the terms say that we can't really share those, so I can't really go into those in more details. But then I was looking at logos. So we took the Riku logo, and we uploaded it and we asked for variations of it and you'll see that you get some interesting stuff so this second one here it's made these outer lines a bit more thick um it's just sort of polished it up this one's added this cool little design from the center circle which i quite like and then we just have this one which is like a bullseye type image and you'll see if you are a creative person creating logos or creating designs for people and you just wanted to see different variations, then this is a very interesting tool to be able to do that and just sort of get those outputs very quickly. You'll see that I've done the same with the Content Villain logo and we get some other variations which are very cool. You'll see because we have text in this, it hasn't been able to replicate that text successfully, but it's given us some interesting designs. I think this is really cool. It's a really nice uh, design. And then this one, which al almost looks like a sort of dog or I, it's not like, a, doesn't look so human. Uh, but you know, someone with design skills would be able to take the raw image and then cut out the text and put in the text that they actually want. So I think there is the potential for this technology to save a lot of time. The 
other experiment I did for logos was putting in the room filler logo where we have a house with a heart in it. And I really like some of these variations. So this was the original. We come in, we have one variation, a second variation, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. I really like this. This, this is really cool. Um, and you could use this in your work if you found a logo that you liked and you just wanted to change it slightly. And then I guess the final example I'm gonna to show to you today is using the Twitter logo. So we put in the original Twitter logo. You'll see the beak is like this. You'll see the wings are like this. I'm just going to say that because this is sort of what changes. So you'll see the first variation, it's gone for more of a sharp beak. So it's very pointy edges instead of the smooth ones on the original and the wings have changed slightly. And then again, this one, the beak is pointy, but it's a bit larger and the rest of it remains pretty similar. This one's gone for one long beak, so you haven't got a mouth on it at all. And the wings are slightly different. I quite like this one. And again, this one is different again and again. So if you are a designer and you're creating logos and you're looking for variations of logos, maybe there's something that your client has come to you and said, hey, I really like that design. Is it possible to create something like that? By using a tool like DALI2, what you can do is you'd be able to put in a logo, you'd be able to get variations of that logo, and then you'd be able to present them to your client before you did further work on them. So this technology is really incredible for doing something like that. Um, what we're gonna do now is I just wanna showcase a few of the image generation sort of capabilities. So let's have a look at how that would look. So we could come in and we could say, uh, superhero, uh character digital art for a vacation rental brand standing on a tropical beach ready to help tourists find their ideal accommodation with their superpowers highly detailed so what we can do is we can put in a prompt like this saying what we want the AI to generate. We can hit generate and we can see what it comes up with. And what I like about DALI is it gives you these little loading screens where it tells you what you can do to improve your prompts. Um, so this is super awesome. I'm really excited for an API to become available for this. But at the moment, we do not have one. So these are the variations that we got from that prompt. Superhero, tropical beach, you see a property in the background, that's very cool. This one as well is also super fun, super interesting. The third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and the sixth one. And you'll see that sixth one, the face is a little bit more messed up. Um, but it provides quite an abstract sort of design. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to try and create a photo of something. So we can say photo of a kangaroo uh, relaxing at the beach with a cocktail. And we'll just put ultra realistic, highly detailed at the end just to see what comes up. So we are now asking for a kangaroo at the beach with a cocktail. Let's see what we get. It's always fun playing around with this and seeing the type of outputs that you get. You can put different artists and different styles to get different outputs. <laughs> so here we go, we have a kangaroo photo with his, I don't know what that is, martini or something at the beach. Super fun. Again, the second one. It's third one. Not sure what he has in his mouth there. Maybe like a kazoo type thing. Fourth one. That's a really cool image. I really like the art on that. That's uh, super nice. He's got a flower in his mouth and the cocktail with the flower in the drink. That's awesome. And the sixth one. He's even got his shades on. 
and he's got a carrot there. <laughs> so you can really sort of let your uh, let your imagination run wild whilst you are playing around with these sort of prompts. And we could put something like uh, Harry Potter and Gollum playing volleyball together on the beach. I don't know why I'm obsessed with beaches today. Maybe, maybe I'm Joe Holiday. <laughs> I seem to have beaches on my mind. But let's see what we have here. You'll get hopefully an interpretation of Harry Potter and Gollum playing volleyball together on the beach. Um, you can really just let your imagination run wild on these things. So <laughs> these are very cool. Very strange first one. The second one. <laughs> super interesting. The third one. Looking very weird. The fourth one. The fifth one. And the sixth one. And to finish up this video, one of the things that I really like to try when I am generating with these is pixel art, and it does it incredibly well. So we could say uh, wizard casting a fire spell out of his, out of his, let's go for a witch actually, out of her, let's go for a witch. A witch casting a fire spell out of her fingers with a big grin pixel art and for anyone who likes the old school sort of pixel art from games of a bygone era something like this is incredibly incredibly impressive because you're gonna get some awesome uh, outputs and you will see these appear now. So we have one, the pixel art witch casting a fire spell out of her fingers. Two, that's really awesome. The third one, we got a blank. It can give blanks occasionally. Fourth one, you see the big grin, you see the fire, it's awesome. Sixth one, that one looks like an evilly witch. And the final one is very pixel in design. So these are super cool, super interesting, and super fun to use. I thought it would be fun to just sort of go through a few of these generations and see how they look. We're very interested in all of this image generation. I think once you pair it with AI text generation, which is what we have in Riku at the moment, you're going to get some incredibly powerful sort of workflows. So we're very keen to integrate everything within Riku as soon as it is possible to do so. If there are any generations that you want us to try within Daddy 2, please just leave a comment below and we'll try them out in future videos. Very excited to play with this technology. Very fortunate to have sort of the access that we've got this early within the beta. Uh, we're very hopeful and we're very uh, wishing that it becomes more available for everyone. And once it does, we hope that an API becomes available so that people can use it within their own workflows. And this technology can really sort of flourish in so many different ways from design to mocking up products to creating characters to doing a bunch of different stuff. So stay tuned. There's a lot of interesting, interesting stuff coming. And this is just the start of this technology. If you are interested in playing with all of the best uh, artificial intelligence, large language models in terms of text in one place, go to rookie.ai today. We'd love to help you out with your needs. And if you've enjoyed this type of content, looking at artificial intelligence, AI, all of the fun stuff with prompts, trying out different things, consider subscribing to this channel. It really helps us out. Thank you.